former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Sanusi Lamindo Sanusi, has called for an audit of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, noting that this call was what cost him his job at the Apex Bank. Sanusi, who was CBN governor from June 2009 to February 2014, made this known at the Bank Directors Summit in Abuja, adding that the president should not be the Minister of Petroleum. Now, Sanusi stated that the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCON, and the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, and DIC, must remain until banks get together and pay up what they owe the system, while the banking sector must share up its first, its trust must shore up, I beg your pardon, its trust deficit in the eyes of the public. The former Apex Bank boss maintained that there is no need to amend the CBN Act to keep the Apex Bank free of political influences. All right. This morning, we're being joined by economist Paul Alaje to discuss this further. Good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning and thank you so much for having me. Now, this is not the yeah. first time that we've had uh, the former CBN president and the mayor of uh, Kaduna, or Kanu rather, join us to talk about, talk about the NNPC, right? And uh, he's been asking questions for years. I did mention at some point during the show today how he gave an example many years ago of how the NNPC had made 60 billion and remitted 47 billion and he was asking what happened to the remaining 20 billion. So uh, talk to us about this uh, disclosure about investigating the NNPC and asking it to be audited. Well, it's only in Nigeria where your major source of income is uh, not investigated. Most businesses, they look at what gives them the highest revenue. For Nigeria, what gives us the highest revenue in terms of FX is uh, NNPC. We saw what happened when CBN was audited. So I really don't know why auditing NNPC properly and taking decision on the aftermath effect it's a real challenge. The Auditor General of Nigeria have continued to do that audit uh, because it is actually required by the law of Nigeria. And we have seen the report, at least. I can tell you the, uh, the one I, I have seen myself, you know, before the recent time, where the Auditor General of Nigeria have continued to audit and make recommendations. So what the, the former MA of Kano, the former CBN governor, SLS, uh, that's Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, is, is talking about is something that worried most policymakers and those of us who have a special interest in the economy of our country. So if Nigeria wants to see true liberation, it's important for us. We, have, we claim we have onboarded uh, the NNPC, but NNPC is still perhaps, uh, I say with a lot of caution, mm. major importer of petrol into Nigeria. That one, two, is see the regulator Three, he's still in charge of allocating licenses. For us, there's so much thing NNPC is doing. We claim is now limited. And limited liability company... Um, Mr. Yeah, okay. ...is owned by the government of Nigeria. The government of Nigeria 100% controls the share. So how do we say that in the real sense that the NNPC is truly unbundled, is truly liberated? And we have given advice, even though there are a number of persons who continue to give counter advice to those in government. Previous government, and in fact, and indeed the government of Nigeria today, that if we truly want to solve some of the challenges we have today, we need not to have just one organization, institution as, as NNPC. We need other institutions to work. Yes, we have uh, the Petroleum Act which of course has stipulated some things. I've seen the energy of government removing subsidy because it's, the provision is not made for in the, in the law. But the question is, have we been able to solve multitude problems that we have within that sector in Nigeria today? I saw the EMEA mention uh, quite a number of issues. Maybe if time permits, we'll, we'll look at them, that. then we yeah. can also solve several way forward. So just for the audience, in terms of a bit more background, this is now, uh, we're entering about the fourth month that the NNPCL uh, has delayed the release of its 2022 annual report. Uh, this is also, of course, another issue that's there. And we know how much fanfare came about when uh, they announced the 2020 audited annual report in August 2021, declaring it was the first profit that the company had made in 44 years. 
But now there's also the question, this being a very pivotal year for NMPCL to release its report, because this is the first full year that the NMPC has supposedly operated strictly as a commercial entity, as dictated by the Petroleum Industry Act, which was signed into law in September 2021. So, Mr. Alege, let's talk about the fact that this year is a very important one for us to be able, or the year that has, what has become one year now, uh, is very important for us to see those audited uh, reports and audited statements from the NNPCL. But what should we expect? The first year that the company has now become a limited liability company in terms of its audited reports, seeing the performance of the company the past one year, the oil sector as well, how oil prices have acted, the dollar and the forex situation. What would you expect in the audited reports that should be coming, should have already come even from the NNPCL? Well, what, what I expect from the NNPCL is transparency. Uh, this report is expected that we'll make it as transparent as possible. But please, we should not be deceived. Even when the report comes up, we need to know who, appoint, who, who is the person responsible for the appointment of the auditor. Therefore, I would want the government of the day to have an independent opinion, to reinvestigate the activities of NNPCL because it is very important for us to be sure that Nigeria, uh, the, the commonwealth of our nation, is getting to where it should be per time. So we have quite a number of, of, of oil wells. We have a number of activity and NPC have uh, been uh, involved with. And I can tell you, it's important for, 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 for government to look beyond what NNPC is supposed to have released, which is not being released as, as we speak, but to allow independent body you know, to look, to investigate again the financial activities and the operation of an NPC. And I can tell you, you will have a lot of revelation. I don't want to preempt the report, you know, but it's important for us to know that if the report is properly done, then we should await a lot of revelation. We've seen what happened in the case of NNPC, I mean, in the case of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And you know that these are two star boys, if you like, agencies of government, NNPC and Central Bank. But we have seen what has happened in Central Bank and we are still battling with the after aftermath effect. The other one is NNPC. Like Yemia said when he was the Central Bank governor, we have seen a lot of arguments and a lot of allegations against the NNPC. But we would see uh, if government, we have the political will to do the needful, because this will of course help in terms of um, the, the, the decision and people for, that will take government seriously, whether the government of Nigeria is truly ready to fight corruption or whether the government of Nigeria is honest about fighting corruption and also are doing the right thing per time. So I am of the strong opinion that yes, this report should be held ASAP. If not, the government has the right to set up independent body to request for all NNPC documents and investigate what has happened to the Commonwealth of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And if NNPC has a pass mark, yes, we should give it to them. Mm -hmm. But if not, then government should take needful decision without wasting time. So who is this government that will take the needful mm -hmm. decision? I ask this because it's, you know, it's very important what you're saying. But who will take this decision? So sometime in August, we did see that. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, so sometime in August, a few months after the president was sworn in, we saw the separation in the Ministry of Petroleum with Ekperi uh, Ekperi made the Minister of State Gas Resources and the Heineken Lukobori Minister of State Petroleum, Petroleum Resources. Mm -hmm. Nothing was said of at that time, you know, of the Ministry Minister of Petroleum. And of course, it went without saying that he's following the suit of his predecessor. He's following suits just like his predecessor. So if the you know president is the Minister of you know Petroleum. What is the expectation that there would actually be a thorough investigation? Who will conduct this investigation? Who are they investigating? Who is this report going to be brought to? I don't know if you understand where I'm coming from. Clearly. Now, so this is what government have done over the years. They've always had um, the president as the minister of petroleum. We have seen it at least in the different government. I think it's only President Jonathan who had a substantive minister of petroleum. President Obasanjo at the time was Minister of Petroleum. President Buhari was Minister of Petroleum. Technically speaking, I may want to say, you know, taking necessary caution, perhaps President Tinubu is also the Minister of Petroleum. So, but you see, these are political appointments they've given themselves. Whether they are paid as minister, it's a different conversation uh, altogether. But I want to believe that they are not paid as minister, they are paid as a president. I'm not sure until, of course, the media and investigative journalists 
looking to that. So, but here is the point. They all rely on what NNPC as an organization, what they do. They all rely on the decision coming from the board of NNPC. You know that none of those presidents have gone to the board of NNPC. Perhaps because they think the power of Minister of Petroleum is too much. And they don't want to appoint another minister because of human factor and trust issues among politicians themselves. That may be the reason. I'm not sure. I'm just saying. But here is the point. The, the, chief, the chief executive of the NNPC must give account. If money has been mismanaged and the minister, whether he's the president or is an appointee of president or is those in executive, has uh, 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 been indicted, then it should come to the fore for Nigeria to know that those who we have elected or those who we have elected have appointed by extension are the ones that have ruined our nation and have destroyed our country. And I continue to say, look at Saudi Arabia, a country rich in oil. Look at United Arab Emirates, a country rich in oil. But what is the focus of United Arab Emirates? Why is it that their exchange rate is not getting devalued? Because they are still exploring crude. Most, not all, though, the most, uh, I mean, countries that exploit, that exploit crude, their currency is not as bad as we have in Nigeria. Therefore, something is wrong with the way we are operating that sector, even though there are other sectors that I think we also need to do a lot about. But I can tell you that for this particular sector, we need to take more decisions in making it beneficiary to our nation. Because today, I doubt if that is what we are getting. We are not getting as much. So investigation is necessary, whether it's going to indict the sitting, uh, the, the, the former president, because of course we cannot start investigating activity now. But for those who have been in office, we need to put our searchlight in checking the operation of NNPC. I mean several allegations, you know, that have come and gone. We saw our former director of NNPC as start uh, is it millions of dollars, if not billions? I'm not sure now. But a lot of money in a Kaduna uh, rickety in, 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 in an apartment, you know, in one middle, in the middle of nowhere, middle of an accommodation, I beg your pardon, in Kaduna. And when that building was brought down under the last administration, we, we, we started hearing story. What has come out of that matter? The fact that the Auditor General of Nigeria continued to report that Nigeria is spending billions of naira to service for refineries that were never functional. And these monies were used to pay salaries. Yet, these refineries have not been able to produce anything. The fact that there is uh, no remittance at all to federal government for years from NNPC as a result of crude sold. So, are we saying that those, those, uh, those uh, activities should not be investigated by government? Whosoever is indicted, let us know exactly how Nigeria resources are dispensed. So, that's 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 what economics uh, we, we we push for, and okay. that is the voice. That is how we are lending our voices to it. If anybody says they want to be the minister of petroleum and they are the chief executive of the nation, well, all and good for them. But I think the national assembly should come out with laws to prevent the president of the nation from appointing themselves as ministers at the same time. And I can tell you, this must be a constitutional matter. When the Blackton Assembly becomes serious, they will make it a decision that if we have appointed anybody, if you have elected, I beg your pardon, anyone as our president, you cannot hold two positions together at the same time. You cannot function properly as the president of the nation where you are supposed to give us a very strong economy. And you are coming again to say you want to be the minister of petroleum. There is confusion here. When division is divided into two, then there is division. Okay. So I hope that the eye of the leader will be single and National Assembly will help in pushing our country forward and to a better destination. So as we talk about these audited reports, uh, the one we're expecting, the few that we have, and of course the call from uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, let's also look at the fact that uh, the NNPCL is seeking to list on the Nigerian Stock Exchange and also looking to raise equity capital. I in terms of that, there are obvious rules and regulations that come with listing on the Stock Exchange, uh, the, the issues that are going to come with, of course, trying to raise equity. Are we expected to see same of the same, or is that going to be somewhat of enough pressure to get the NMPCL and the board to start doing things the right way consistently, not these one-offs, not these delays? Because if this was a company on the uh, Nigerian exchange as it is right now, the NGX, that's about three or four months late with its audited reports, 
we know what would happen to them, Mr. Alege. So in terms of the NNPC moving in that direction, will this also help to, to right size and to sort of sanitize the situation around the NNPC's audited statements? Well, I think it's a good thing to do. Once it goes to the exchange, there are rules that cannot be bent once it's on the exchange. For instance, submission of reports, it is not just because government wants to see it, it's also because it's a rule that must be uh, followed. Again, government interest in the NNPCL, of course, which will now be perhaps a uh, public limited by company then, will reduce, and I'm hoping that government will reduce our uh, interest uh, to about 40%. So that private sectors can take core decisions that is mandate that is mandatory. But I would not want re regulatory decisions to be left in the hand of private sector. That is why when I started my with my opening remarks, I said that NNPC unbundling will not be what we have seen in the last few years. We still need government uh, representation as a regulatory body. The job of government is to regulate. But when it comes to all the businesses, downstream business or business around the upstream that we have seen NNPC uh, perform, it is not necessary. Let those in private sector, we should now register for that purpose such that we can have a real businesses happening at both areas and uh, we, are, we allow just the current NNPC situation to be purely within the regulatory uh, sector, regulatory framework. So for me, I think it will be a major development and of course, it will also mean that those who are not ready to do the business of, uh, of the, to do business proper, properly, they will have no business remaining or staying in business. Uh, Mr. Alaje, thank you so much for joining us. There's so much conversation that we still need to talk about when it comes to the NNPC. Uh, Sanusi Lamido had said so many things, talked about how right now we can't say for certain how much, uh, how, how many barrels are, you know, sold or how many, how much remittance is coming to the coffers of the NNPC. You know, because they are not revealing as much as they should. But, I mean, we can only hope for the best and continue to talk about this, continue to spark conversations that would keep the, hold them to account. And maybe one day the right thing will be done. Thanks for joining us and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank you.